Hello, training 19. Is it the right time to leave your toxic job and pursue your passion career? And you might be surprised that the answer could be yes or could be no. I'm not 100% sure for every person that it is the right time. So if you don't know me, I'm Meredith Hawley. I am a lawyer, power dynamics facilitator, and best-selling author. And I help employees stop sexual harassment without quitting their jobs. So for some of my people, my clients that I work with, they want to stay in their jobs, they're committed to their jobs, and they want their workplace culture to be healthy. For other people, they want to leave their work from an empowered place. And I think both are really great options, right? If you know that it's the right time to leave and you're leaving from an empowered place, that can be a great decision. If you know this is the career that you want and <clears throat> it's the right time to stay, that can also be an amazing decision. So here's the thing I noticed though. I talk to a lot of people and they say, I'm thinking about writing a book. I wanna write a book. Um, when I retire, I'm gonna be an artist. If I had a million dollars, I would quit my job and go do this passion project that I love. I would be an actress, right? Um, I was talking to a friend the other day and she had someone come to her and tell her, um, if you had a million dollars, you would not do this job. And the interesting thing about this situation with my friend is she actually feels that her job is her passion job and she totally disagreed. But it's interesting that we kind of absorb this rhetoric that something is better, that our jobs aren't good enough, that we're stuck and that our jobs are unfulfilling and that almost that it's okay and normal to have an unfulfilling job and to be in something unfulfilling. And then I talk to a lot of people who over and over again say, I should be doing something more impactful. I should do something more meaningful. My job doesn't really make a difference and it should, but I make a good salary, I have benefits. Um, I, uh, you know, I want the job security, I get good vacation pay, and basically that they're afraid to go to the next thing, or even I don't know what the next thing would be, right? So it's one thing to dream about what's possible, to envision what's possible, and if you've watched any of my other trainings, you know that I'm a big fan of dreaming about even what's impossible and envisioning how you can get there. It's another thing though, to have this vision of what your life should be or this obligation that your life should make a bigger difference or that you're not fulfilling your purpose or things like that and use that against where you are now. So I wanna tell you about a concept that I call the self-trust locator. And I sort of take this from uh, a couple of different concepts, but it's basically giving yourself a deadline by which you either are taking action towards your passion or you're being passionate about where you are. So the self-trust locator, the first thing you do is you list three reasons to stay where you are now. The second thing you do is you list three reasons to pursue your passion. And you write these out on paper, don't just list them in your head. Write three reasons to stay where you are now, three reasons to pursue your passion now. Um, so then you choose what reason you like the best. Right? And it can be any reason. There's no wrong reason. You get to choose. So three reasons to stay where you are now, three reasons to pursue your passion now, and then choose the reason that you like the most. And go with that reason and make that decision. So either commit to taking action towards your passion now or commit to being passionate about where you are now. Um, so I, I found at one point... I, I was working as a lawyer and I had just gotten certified as a life coach and I was trying to run this business, this sort of coaching business, try out running a coaching business while I was also having my law practice. And what I found was that having this vision of my future vision, of my future business, of my passion project was actually turning into something that was not healthy in the work that I was actually in, in the work that I was choosing every day, right? So I was using the potential of having a life coaching business 
as a reason to criticize the work that I was doing that I actually did love. So I, I believed that the life coaching tools that I learned were the most impactful thing I've ever seen in the world, right? And that they're way more impactful than simple legal tools, even though the law totally has value. But I loved my legal job, right? I loved my law career. I loved the work that I did as a lawyer and I wanted to keep that. And so as I was holding this vision of what I thought my um, my coaching business should be, it really was turning into not something that was inspiring, not something that was fulfilling, but something that was actually critical of the work that I was doing in reality. So, um, a reason, so a lot of people start trying on their passion project or they start. So like, um, like my reason for starting my coaching business before it was really time was I wanted to see if I could do it. Right. And I thought if I tried it on the side that I would see if I could do it. And if I couldn't do it, then I would know I have to stay in my law job. But the, that's a terrible reason, right? This is why you have to know your reasons. It's a terrible reason to keep something on the side that's undermining the work that you're actually doing because really what you're proving is that you can't do it, which is not conclusive proof that you can't do it when you're doing something half-assed, right? If you're doing something half-assed, you, you're deciding ahead of time that you can't do it. You're not putting your energy into it. And so... Now, when I actually, when it was time to start my business for real, the reason that I had was that I know there's someone out there who is afraid to leave their house and needs help and is so terrified to go to work that they hear the sound of their heart beating in the morning while they're in the parking lot getting ready to go into the building. I know that that person needs help and I know that I can help that person. This is a very compelling reason to take action. So then what you want to do, so that's just examples of reasons. You want to know your reasons and you want to like your reason for pursuing and being passionate about your work now or taking act like hardcore action towards the passion that you want. So a lot of times when we're envisioning this future uh, passion project, um, we think that that project is going to create our passion for us, right? And that doesn't work. So our passion project doesn't create our passion. We choose the passion and then we create the project. It does, it, like if you're looking for your work to entertain you, to create passion in you, it's not what you end up finding is you do the work and you still don't have the passion because you're still living in the same <laughs> experience. You're still having the same thoughts. And there's always something else that we can justify we should be doing, right? There's always something else that we think that would be better or that would be more fulfilling or that we could show up more. There's, there's always evidence and justification for keeping those thoughts. So if you hang on to them in your job now, and then you leave for your passion project, you probably will continue to have that same self-criticism, lack of passion. And like in my experience, prove that you can't do it ahead of time by limiting yourself, by not showing up wholeheartedly. So you wanna choose a passion reason for either choice. And the best way to do this is to choose a reason that you like for both. Choose a reason that you like to stay that you're passionate about to stay where you are. Then choose a reason that you like to create your passion career that seems like external, right? That seems like being an artist or whatever it is, having my business. And choose a reason that you like for that and compare the reasons that you like. A lot of times when I see people do this, they choose a bunch of reasons they don't like for one or a bunch of reasons they don't like for the other. And so it's not, so you want to choose reasons you like, and then there's a best reason that you like the most. And that reason is how you decide which one to do, which reason of all the reasons that you like, which reason do you like the most? What's the thing that, that like is possible for either choice? So then what you want to do is you want to basically um, 
set, this is in law, we call this the statute of limitations. And the statute of limitations is the date by which you lose your legal claims if you haven't made them so far, right? And so what you wanna do in that way is you wanna make today the statute of limitations on indecision. No more indecision, you go passion in one direction and you just decide ahead of time. So um, if we're looking for our career to create our passion instead of our thoughts to create our passion, it's very hard to find that passion, right? Because careers just sit there, right? And we are the ones who create the passion. So what can you do tomorrow? Make the decision now, set yourself the time limit today, I'll let you have 24 hours if you want, but today is the day that you decide to go forward in passion where you are now or take passionate action towards the new career that you want, knowing that both of them are actually neutral on their own. It's you that chooses the passion. So here's how we choose passion. We get up in the morning and we ask ourselves, what am I passionate about? What am I going to choose to be passionate about in this work? What, is, what am I going to choose to be inspired about in this work? And the reason for doing that is that passion is just a feeling and feelings are created by our thoughts, right? If you ask yourself a powerful question, like what am I gonna be passionate about here? What am I gonna decide to be passionate about here? Your brain will answer that question and you can create the passion ahead of time. When you're feeling passionate, you're gonna show up stronger in your career, whether it's the one you have now or whether it is the, the alternate career you wanna choose. And here's the thing. so. It doesn't matter if you work at a, as a bank teller, you can choose passion in that job. And there's nothing wrong with like, what is the downside of choosing to be passionate as a bank teller? There's no downside to that. We often think if I choose passion in this career, then I'm never going to leave and I'm going to be stuck here for forever. But really what keeps us stuck is fear of being passionate, a fear of showing up wholeheartedly in what we're doing, right? So if you choose passion now, you're on the path, your brain is going to see what is going to contribute more to that passion. You're going to move forward towards things that nurture that passion. If you stay in confusion about what to do, if you're like, I don't know, I should leave, and you're shooting on yourself, <laughs> and you say, I, I should make a bigger difference, I should do something else, then you're practicing creating that self-shame, right? That embarrassment, that feeling of being stuck and confused. So choosing passion now, even in the career you have, doesn't mean you have to stay in that career when it's the right time to leave, to continue to nurture your passion. Your brain will see that right time. All right. Thank you for listening. So this is the self-trust locator. This is how you develop this relationship of self-trust with yourself is choosing reasons you like for both choices and then picking your top reason and deciding and creating that passion for yourself instead of looking to your job to create it, looking to your work to create it, looking to your clients or your bosses to create it. Choose that yourself and then set the deadline as now when you make the decision because both are right decisions and you are the one that knows. All right. If you know somebody who feels stuck in their job, obviously send them our way. Encourage them to reach out. They deserve to have passion in their career, as do you. And we love to help people ask any questions that you have. Send me a private message if you think of any questions, and I'm happy to answer them and include them in these trainings. Uh, we have or 11 more to go. That's exciting. And we're going to wrap up next week. Thank you, guys.